Hey there everybody, welcome back, it's Leon. Today we're gonna to talk about the parametric EQ block and the Axe 8 and the Axe FX. So to start, I've got the Friedman HBE loaded up with a V30 SM57 Impulse from the York Audio Bipolar Cab Pack and it sounds like this. <laughs> What we're going to do is use a parametric EQ block after the cab and a parametric EQ block before the amp to shape the gain and to shape the overall tone in two different ways. So let's get started with a very quick rundown of what the parametric EQ block does. You can see here for each band, you have a frequency control, a Q control, and a gain control. Now the frequency control is gonna be the center frequency that the EQ boosts or cuts on, and the gain is obviously gonna control the amount of boosts or cut. Then this Q control controls the width of that area around the frequency that's going to be boosted or that's going to be cut. The other thing is the type of EQ we've got there. You can have a blocking EQ, which is like a high pass or a low pass, a peaking EQ, which most people commonly associate with parametric EQ, and we've also got traditional tone style controls, which are the two different shelving EQs. So the first thing we can have a look at are the blocking EQs. We've got a high pass and we've got a low pass. So I'm gonna set the high pass at 80 hertz, I'm gonna set the low pass at 8,000 hertz, and I'm gonna engage this block and we can have a listen to what that does to the tone. Here's the amp and the cab raw. So you can hear that that high and low pass is incredibly powerful. It takes out some of the boom from the low end and also takes out some of the sizzle from the top end. I've got some other videos where I talk about high and low cuts specifically as great tools that you can use to make your modeler sound better. So if you haven't watched those, check them out. Let's get into the nitty gritty now about these peaking style EQ control. So the Q is really, really important here. For example, I'm gonna start at 250 hertz. I'm just gonna pull a little bit of 250 out, like maybe two dB. And you can see there, pulls out a bunch of bands around that frequency. So if I turn the Q up, it's gonna make my cut more precise and it's gonna take out less of these frequencies that surround it. So if I set that around 1.4, and we'll have a listen to what that does. It's very subtle, but it takes out just that little bit of boom. The other frequency that this time I like to boost is somewhere around 1800 to 2K, and I'll give that about 2 dB, so it's subtle. And I'll also adjust the Q so that it's at 1.4. Let's have a listen to this now. And let's remind ourselves of what it sounds like without the parametric EQ block on at all. No high or low pass and no boost or cut. So essentially what we're doing is we're really honing in on the guitar specific frequencies that are gonna make our guitar pop out in a mix. So you can play around with the cue, you can play around with the different frequencies that you like to boost or cut, and you can have immense control over the shape of your tone. The other way to use parametric EQ is in front of the amp. So what I'm gonna do is Think of this as basically a very frequency specific boost. I can obviously use this as a flat boost just by turning the level up and down. Let's have a listen to what that does. And if you've run out of drive blocks or you're running low on CPU, this is a really good way to get a flat gain boost. However, we can apply the same thing. So just a very specific frequency. For example, let's take 800 hertz, which happens to be one of the default frequencies. And I'm gonna turn the Q up, say to just over one, say 1.1. And what we can play around with is boosting this very specific set of frequencies. Let's have a listen to what that does. I think it probably sounds best around 6 dB. You can obviously fine tune that. And you can hear that as I really start to crank it, you kind of get that 
cocked wah kind of thing happening. Um, if you play around with the frequency here, somewhere between, I don't know, 750 and 1.5 kilohertz, you can dial in a great solo boost that's really gonna help you cut through a mix. Um, much in the same way that, you know, for me, I love stepping on a wah pedal for solos because I can use it as a filter uh, to basically fine tune particular notes and really make them pop out. Um, and this parametric EQ pre-boost does the same thing. The other thing that's pretty powerful with it as well, and I think this is a cool little trick. For example, the Freewin amps have something called a C45 switch, where basically what you do is you take this shelving EQ type and oh, you can play around with where you want to set it. I might start at 450 Hertz and I'm just going to knock out 3 dB there. But I'm also going to boost 3 dB starting from the same place. Let's have a look at what that does. Oh, I don't want to do 12 dB. I just want to do three. There we go. Let's have a listen to how this changes the interaction of our guitar and the front end of the amplifier. <laughs> And you can obviously change that center frequency. You can bring it down so that it's lower. Or you can send it up higher, say let's put it at 800. Why not? This almost gets you into sort of treble booster type of territory without having to resort to, you know, using a drive block and fine tuning it and things like that. This gives you precise control over where you want each of the shelving frequencies to be. And I think that's quite a cool trick. I like it a little bit lower, say 400 Hertz seem to sound a little bit better with this amp, but you can play around with it. Um, and you can obviously play around with the amount of boost or cut as you see fit, but I think that's a really cool little trick for any kind of high gain amp, or if you're using a dark sounding guitar, if you're using an overly bright sounding guitar, you could do the opposite thing. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm playing a 335 at the moment, so I'll put the neck pickup on and turn this shelving trick off. <laughs> Uh, which is quite dark, but with it on. And that kind of livens things up a little bit. Uh, we could go on and on about the parametric EQ block, but I'd really encourage you to do some reading about, you know, studio EQ and suitable frequencies to boost and cut for the guitar. And most importantly, to use your own ears and use these blocks to help fine tune your guitar tones.